Why don't you start at the very beginning? Tell us about your early childhood. My early childhood. Well, my parents adopted me when I was a baby. And about four years later, they adopted my younger brother, Gabe. And was he a welcome addition to the family or an intruder? <laughs> we got along great. Things were good up until about age nine. What happened? Well, my dad took a new job that kept him out of the house most of the time. So I barely saw him. And I started acting out. The times that I did see him, I tended to bring more anger out of him. Was he ever abusive towards you? I wouldn't call it abusive. Uh, it was a stressful time for him mm -hmm. and our family. But unfortunately, any closeness that I had with my dad started to unravel at that time. Did your family have any improvements by the time you reached your teen years? No, things pretty much stayed the same. But one thing that did change with me though, is who I started hanging around. When I was 14, I met this kid named Dave. And it wasn't long before him and I were real good friends. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, no, 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 no. Hey, what's that? That's a story I'm writing. What are you writing a story for? It's for a writing class. That stinks, man. Well, you know, it's not that bad. I'm kind of enjoying writing it. Whatever, man. Why is it there ever anything on? Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Do you guys value the people in your life? Do you guys value your friends? How about your parents and siblings? Do you guys value them? How about the bully at your school? How many of you value him or her? Nobody ever loves the bullies, do they? Not something you typically think about, right? But you know what? Jesus loves them. In fact, Jesus loved and approached the people who were looked down on the most in the society of his day. The guy we're gonna take a look at was despised like a bully who might shake down someone for the lunch money, this guy would shake down people for extra money on top of what they owed in taxes. His name was Zacchaeus, and we're gonna look at how Jesus responded to this man. Turn with me to Luke chapter 19. How was Sunday school, boys? Good. Fine. What'd you learn? John. What was the lesson about? It was, uh, he was talking about the short dude. And I think his name was like, Zach. Zacchaeus? Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. What'd you learn about Zacchaeus? I don't remember. How many times do I need to tell you, you need to pay attention in class? Pastor Mark has brought this up several times. You need to pay attention in class and stop distracting other kids. How many times do we have to have this conversation? Then she came stomping down the stairs in a fury, stomped her way into the living room, and got right up into her dad's face. Why won't you let me go to the prom? She exclaimed. Hello? Hey, John, you gotta come over, man. Why? What's going on? 
Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle of something. You're not gonna want to miss this party, man. There's gonna be high school chicks there. Really? Yeah, now come over. Alright, I'm coming. Why don't you guys take a look around, see if you know anybody? Come on, let's go. You guys want some of this? Um, no thanks. Yeah, sure, man. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, no, yeah, I'll try. Oh, yeah, dude, puff it up, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good, man. Come on. Try it. Good stuff, bro. Man, let me see that. Thing. Jasmine, are you okay? What happened? But please lock the door. Jasmine, talk to me. What happened? I was raped. What? Oh, God. Jasmine, I, I am so sorry. Is there anything, anything I can do? <laughs> Could you stay here a while? I really don't want to be alone right now. Come here. So after that party, what happened? Dave and I continued smoking weed. And when we got bored with that, we started trying other things. Hmm. That certainly didn't help things with my parents. Eventually, it reached a tipping point. I remember that day so clearly. It was a few days before my 18th birthday. They gave me an ultimatum, and I wasn't having it, so I moved out. What did you do? How did you get by? <laughs> Thought I had it all figured out. I moved in with Dave and his brother, and sure, things were fun for a while, but then reality came. We spent most of our money on drugs instead of on bills that needed to be paid. Mm. In fact, we even stole from neighbors a couple of times to come up with money. What about your family during this time? Did they try to reach out to you, try to help you? Yeah, they tried. I just didn't respond. Was there anything good that came out of that time? Yeah. 
I met Kayla. Ha. Then her and I got married in April of 2008. Did things ever improve with your family? A little bit. As much as I would allow. Do we really need to go to my parents' house today? Yes, we made plans with them. Why did I do that? Can we just cancel with them? Look, you already bought a gift. Let's just go, have dinner, and then we can leave, okay? Yeah, okay. Hey. I'm about to take the dog out. All right. Light was on in the garage. Ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. Hey guys. Hey. Glad you could make it. Hey Dad. Hey. Kayla. Hey. Come on in. Gabe, still haven't moved out of here yet? Not yet. What are you like, 24? 23. What's the hold up, man? Actually, Gabe's working on that right now. Oh yeah? How you doing that? He's applying around to colleges. What are you, his spokesperson, Dad? Let him master for himself. John! Kayla! Hey. Oh, so good to see you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Oh, thanks. Happy Mother's Day. They're beautiful. So how are you two doing? Uh, we're all right. Yeah. Well, come on in. Make yourselves at home. Dinner's almost ready. John, how's the job coming along? It's a job. Nothing new to report. Kayla, how about you? How's the dentist office treating you? My job's going great. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be back. So, how was the drive over here, Kayla? Oh, it was smooth. That was until we had traffic. <laughs> I swear, couldn't it be just one time in the year where there's like no construction anywhere? Just one time, that's all I ask, you know? Can and then- you excuse me? And maybe it's just me, but it seems like every time I get to one of those construction zones, it's right when that sign flips the stop, and then they make me sit there and wait like forever. You know what I mean? Yeah? Hey, 
Hey, Dad, what's up? Everything okay? What do you mean? You're in there for quite a while. Think I was in there using drugs, don't you? I didn't say that, did I? You didn't have to say it. I can see it on your face. Why is it every time I come over here, you gotta do this to me, man? I'm just trying to look out for you. Oh, yeah? By accusing me. By trying to run my life. I am not trying to run really? your life. Really? Yes, I... really. What is going on over here? Nothing. We're leaving. What? Oh. Come on. What? The... Get your purse. What? Come on. Please don't go. I'm sorry, Mom. <sighs> Get into it with him again. I'm sorry. I didn't intend to start an argument with him. We've talked about this. You've got to meet him where he's at. How do you do it? How do you talk to him? Try to make him see that you love him. You're right. Wow, it's like clockwork. And you're always out of here right at three. Yep. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, man. See you tomorrow. David. Kitchen. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, Dave. Got your stuff right here. Actually, I'm gonna need 150 from you this time. I always pay 120 a gram. What can I say? The price has gone up. You gonna treat me like any of your other customers, man? Come on, We're friends. It's business, John. Nothing personal. It's 150. Take it or leave it. Can't believe I'm doing this. You know, there's other dealers I can go to. <laughs> yeah. But even at 150 bucks, you're still getting a better deal from me. So quit whining. Thanks, friend. Anytime, buddy.
your survival skills? Oh, I picked it up along the way through life. Who taught you to hunt? Learned a little along the way. I'm mainly, though, a scavenger. What you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? You messing with that stupid novel again? Why do you even waste your time with that? It's not a waste of time. I'm making progress. Huh. I wrote a page the other day. Oh, well, what did you do? You wrote a page. John, you've been messing with that thing for as long as I've known you. You're never gonna finish it. Just accept it. You're not a writer, honey. What do you know? Kayla? Just because you have no ambitions doesn't mean you gotta trample all over mine. That is not true, and you know it. It is true, and I know that. You're still what, a, a receptionist? So? You said you want to be a hygienist, right? Yeah. What's going on with that? I'm still thinking about it. Okay, but you're not doing. I'm doing something I've here. I've been looking have online. You, yes, yes. Are you looking to do it? Get a book. Start reading. Start writing. Start pushing yourself. What have you done in four years? Nothing. I've listened to you. Run me into the ground. You're supposed to be my muse. You're supposed to be my muse. But every that time you come around, I'm uninspired. I should be here showing you my work, but I'm putting it away. How what kind of fault? It's just your fault. What am I doing here? What are you doing in here? What's up behind your back? It's just a socket set. <laughs> then why are you hiding it behind your back? I don't know, you scare me. Just. See? Just organizing my tools. This early in the morning. Can I see what's inside the box? Why? Since when are you interested in tools? I'm not. I just want to see what's inside the box. It's just a socket set, Kayla. Then you shouldn't have any trouble showing it to me. Why don't you just go back inside the house and leave me alone? No. Not until you show me what's in that box. I told you, it's just a socket set. I shouldn't have to show you what's in this box. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. What is that? What do you think it is? If I knew, I wouldn't have asked you. Obviously, it's some, some, some kind of drug. What kind? Answer me! It's heroin. It's heroin. 
How long have you been doing this? A long time. Since, since before we met. I can't believe you! You kept this for me the entire time? I know you are! Kayla, wait! What are you doing? What does it look like I'm leaving? Why? We can work this out. Oh, you think it's that simple? Huh, John? You kept this from me for the, for the entire time I've known you. How can I trust anything you say anymore? I'm going to my mother's house. Kayla. How can I fix this? Don't go. Be all right. You're gonna go to that clinic and you're gonna take care of this. Do you really think I should? I don't see that you have any other choice. You're not ready to be a mother. Your mom's right. You didn't ask for this and you shouldn't be burdened with it. I don't know. How would you support it? It's your only good option. So when your wife walked out, how did you process that? Oh. Anger. Self-pity. And honestly, I didn't want to take any of the blame for it. I made excuses for myself. And I blamed everyone else, including her. But I couldn't deny that I wanted her back in my life. Was there any kind of a wake-up call for you? No, uh, quite the contrary, my friend. I actually spiraled further out of control.
I'm wondering why you didn't show up for work today. You need to call me back ASAP. Goodbye. Okay. All right. I'll take care of it. Yeah. I gotta go. Come in. John, close the door. Have a seat. So where were you yesterday? I was uh, at home sick. Why didn't you give us a call? I, uh... I guess... I fell asleep, and, uh, and I lost track of time. Well, you know that's no excuse, John. You know you've got to give us a call, no matter what the reason. Don't let this happen again. I won't. All right. You okay? You don't look so good. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm all right. Okay. Well, then you can get back to work. Kiss place this weekend? Oh. John. Is everything all right? Uh. Just had a rough couple days, that's all. Man, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Is there anything I can do to help? Or... There's nothing you can do for me, George. You want to talk about it? Nope. Well, if you ever change your mind, I'd love to talk to you. I've been through some rough things myself, including some bad habits I had overcome. Maybe you can relate to my story in some way. What kind of bad habits did you have? You name it, man. Alcohol, cocaine, Prescription drugs. I was in really bad shape. But the Lord came and rescued me when I was at my lowest. So what about you? Are you dealing with something like that? I don't talk about it. All right. I respect that. So if you decide you want to talk, you know where to find me.
loved your wife a lot. Right? All right, I think it's time to hear your wife's Hi, John. Hi, Kayla. What is it, John? I just want to talk. <sighs> so talk. Well, how you doing? How am I doing? How do you think I'm doing? I found out a couple of days ago that my husband is a drug addict. Kayla, what can I do to say that I'm sorry? <laughs> Stop using drugs? I will. I promise you. You're gonna believe that when I see it. I will quit. I don't trust you anymore, John. You've lied to me. I know that I lied. But I'm not lying now. All of these years, you, you've lied to me. I will quit. Yeah, I heard all of that before from my drunk dad. Well, I'm not him. I will quit. Can I uh... come over there and, and talk to you in person? No, I don't want to see you right now. When then? You stop using drugs and then we'll talk. I gotta go, bye. Wait, don't hang What's up, man? You want this stuff or not? John, are you here? John. Come on, John, wake up, man.
He's alive, but we need to leave the hospital right now, okay? Ma'am, you're welcome to ride along, but we need to go now. I'm gonna ride with them. Can you follow us? Yeah. I called Gabe and Kayla, and they're both on their way up here. How is he? He's stable. He's lucky the paramedics got there when they did. How soon can we see him? Soon. I'll come back out and let you know. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Like I said, I'm glad he's fine and recovering. I'm only saying you guys have to face facts here. John's a screw-up, and he's always going to be a screw-up. Keep your voice down. He's right there. I don't care if he hears me. John is not going to change. The sooner you guys realize that, the better off you're going to be. Morning, John. Morning. How you feeling? <laughs> Miserable. How well should I be feeling? So where's everyone else? They're here. What, they don't want to come in and see me? No, they do. And they will. What about Kayla? Is she, is she here? Yeah, she's here. And what about you? What about me? You come here to lecture me? No. Then why are you the only one in here, Dad? What do you want? Where do I begin? I'm sorry, John. For what? I'm sorry for being an absent father to you. My dad, when I was younger, was always too busy for me. I, he was hardly around, and I barely got to know him. I promised myself when I had kids, I wouldn't do that, but I did, and I have to own that. I'm sorry. So I'm asking, can you forgive me for all the times that I've been a lousy father to you? I love you, John. I hope you know that. I'll, I'll send the others in. I love you, John. See you later. Hey, Dave. Fine. What do you want? Come on, man. Is that any way to talk to the friend who saved your life? 
So is that why you call him? Well, that and because we never got to make our deal. It's not gonna happen, man. Ruin my marriage? And it almost killed me. Well, you're fine now, aren't you? What? You think you're the only one who's ever overdosed? Happens all the time and people get right back on their feet. The answer's no, Dave. Don't ever bring that stuff over here again, you got it? Come on, John. John, where you been the past couple of days? Long story, George. I better warn you, Rick is really mad at you. Don't look now. Well, here he comes. Meet me in my office, John. You and I need to talk. So what happened, man? What's it look like, man? Fired me. Nice knowing you, George. Well, hey, it doesn't have to end like that. Get a hold of me sometime. I don't know, maybe we'll hang out and get a burger or something. Yeah. Maybe. Come on, open the door. What do you want, Dave? I'm just stopping by to see how you're doing. Come on, let me in. What's going on, man? You don't got time for me anymore? to the point, Dave. Well, I thought you might like to see my, uh, new product. I told you not to bring that stuff over here. Sure, man, but I know you better than that. Well, you're just wasting your time anyway, man. I just got fired from my job, so... so you won't be able to make much money off of me. That's okay, because tonight, it's on the house. I thought you and I could do a line together for old time's sake. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, this stuff is the best high you'll ever have. Johnny, I thought maybe you'd like to have this back. Thank you. 
Hi, John. I hope you read this. I slipped this into your lunch bag while you were meeting with Rick. My number is 248-555-0199. I would like to meet up sometime and tell you my story. Or if you just want to call and talk, that's fine too. Your friend, George. tell Rick. For all I know, he's climbing on Mount Everest right now. So then he stares at me. He doesn't even crack a smile. Then he turns around and walks away. All right. Enough about work. So, what uh, made you decide to meet with me for lunch anyway, John? My life's a mess, man. Hopeless. I don't know what to do about that. I know that feeling. I've been there. What did you do? Well, it took me a while to see it. But eventually I realized I needed help. I was getting nowhere on my own. How did you get help? You remember when I told you I was going through some rough things, right? Can I tell you about it? Sure. All right. Well, I grew up with an abusive drug dealer for a father. And even though we despised him, my brother and I followed his example by using and dealing drugs. Eventually landed me in prison on a three-year sentence. Yeah, I was miserable. And believe me, at that time, I wanted nothing to do with God. But that didn't stop God from reaching out to me. You see, there was this preacher there. And he would come to the prison every week and share his testimony and hold Bible studies. He would tell us how God changed him and took him from being a thief to a preacher. Yeah, I was too skeptical but I saw joy and peace in this guy that I couldn't ignore. So, a few years later, I find myself a free man, but I wasn't really free. After being clean for a few weeks, I went right back to using drugs. I bounced from one job to another, making enough to survive and supply my drug habit. 
Eventually, I got get evicted from my apartment. So I stumbled my way over to this Christian-run rehab clinic. And while I was there, this Christian therapist befriended me. He also told me how Jesus changed him. And you know what? I started to believe him. And I realized Jesus could do the same for me. He told me that I needed to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. And so I did. And it's true. Jesus has completely changed my life. It didn't happen overnight, but it happened. I am now a different person today. And with God's help, I made it through rehab and eventually stayed clean. The Lord can help you too, John, and he wants to. But he isn't gonna force his way into your life. You have to let him in. Tell me more about this rehab place. They have an awesome staff there. They treat you with love and dignity. And they recognize our great value to God and want to see lives change through him. They'll be a huge help to you, John. Think about it. Hello? Hey, Jasmine. I have some bad news. Our car won't start. Please tell me you're joking. No, I'm not. Of all the days, your car chooses today to break down. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you could reschedule. No, no, I'm, I'm not rescheduling. I want this done and over with. I'll just catch the bus. Jasmine, your mother and I really wanted to be there with you today. I know. We love you. Love you, too. Excuse me, do you mind passing right here? Not at all, dear. How far along are you? Excuse me? You're not showing very much. But trust me, I know when someone's pregnant. I'm a little over four months. I always wondered what it would be like to have a child. So you get to find out what it's like in five months, assuming this is your first child. This is your first child. You know, I really don't want to talk about this. Okay, I won't press you. Where are you headed? Does it matter? You certainly don't have to tell me. I'm just making conversation. Do you want to know why I don't have any children? I was pregnant once. I was about your age. I decided I didn't want the baby. So I went to the clinic and I had an abortion. Now I know God has forgiven me, but I've never forgotten about it. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. I hope you don't make that same mistake. Think about what I said before you go through with it. So what was it about George that influenced you to go to rehab? George didn't seem like a former addict to me, you know? Hmm. He seemed so different from the former life that he described to me. Hmm. So I concluded that it must have been rehab that did that for him. But he did credit Jesus, right? Right. And I didn't believe him. So here you are ready to enter this Christian-run rehab clinic. <laughs> what were your thoughts before you went in there? I kept trying to psych myself up. 
telling myself, if George could do it, I can do it. All right, gentlemen, we have a copy of the schedule posted out here in the hallway. Breakfast is at 7, followed by morning meds. Here's a list of classes as well as group and individual therapy sessions. Now, if you need anything at all, you come find me or one of the other techs. We'll be glad to assist you. All right. See you around, John. It's good to meet you. You too. All right. George, you're a good man. Thank, Thank you. you. Ready? I'll be praying for you, brother. Wow. This place brings back memories. That's a good thing. That's where everything turned around for me. Honestly, George, I'm having second thoughts about this whole rehab thing, man. You're gonna be fine, John. I felt the same way when I first came in here. You have my number. You can call me anytime. Believe me, John, I have your back. And the people in here, they're great. They'll do whatever they can to help you. Come in. Good afternoon, John. Come on in and have a seat. So, how are you feeling today? How do you think I feel? I understand if you're not in a good mood, John. There's nothing easy about detoxing from drugs. But you're here. That's what counts. But I have to ask, why did you decide to come here? I don't see any other way to get my life back. Tell me about that. What have you lost in your life? Oh, uh, well, let's see. My wife, my job, my health. What haven't I lost? I'm sorry to hear that, John. That's a lot to deal with. Now, I want to ask you some things about your family, if that's okay. Go ahead. Are you close with your parents or brother? No. How do you feel when you're around them? I don't know. I mean, I'm not around them much, but when I am, I want the visit to end as quickly as possible. I see. And why is it you don't want to be around them? It's been a long time. But, I uh, guess it all started when I had a falling out with my parents as a teenager. Tell me about that. I remember, I felt like they wanted to control me, especially my dad. In what way did they control you? I don't know. Stuff like making me go to church, trying to keep me from my friends, setting ridiculous curfews, and they yelled at me all the time. Do you think their actions were motivated out of concern, or did they just enjoy telling you what to do? <sighs> Probably out of concern. Let's digress a little. You were adopted, right? Yes. Have you ever met your biological mother or father? No. Have you wanted to? My birth mom, yes. But not my birth dad. Why not your birth dad? Because he raped my mom. I'm sorry to hear that, John. I can tell that is a sensitive subject for you. We don't have to talk about that right now if you don't want to. I never talked to anyone about that, other than my parents. Well, I'm here to help, John, if you want to talk about it. I don't even know where to begin with that. Well, how old were you when you found out about the assault? 
I'll never forget that day. It was right after my 15th birthday. What were you feeling when you first found out about it? Ah, uh, confused, angry. Up until that point, I barely knew anything about my birth mom and nothing about my birth dad. I used to wonder about him. But after that, I hated him. I always used to ask myself, why my birth mom gave me up? Suddenly, it all made sense to me. It made me feel worthless. Like, I was a big mistake. You're not a mistake, John. And you're not your father. You've been created in the image of God. And he loves you and values you, regardless of where you came from. I really hope that you'll come to accept that. Yeah. Me too. John. All right. Well, I want to thank the three of you for coming in here to join John and have this talk as a family. John, I want to start by asking you to share your thoughts with your family about why you're here. Well, um... My life is a mess. And um, I needed to do something about that. So I'm here. And um, I hope that you guys will support me. Of course we'll support you, John. And we're 100% behind you. Yeah, I mean, we're all here for you, man. Now, I want each of you to take turns expressing how you feel towards John and how you would like to see your relationship improve with him and as a family. Gabe, let's start with you. Well, uh, it's good you're getting help. So how do I feel toward you? I guess I feel uh, distant. That's all I can think of. Would you like to expound on that a little, Gabe? Why do you feel distant from John? <sighs> I used to look up to you when I was younger. But then one day you up and left, and it's like you wanted nothing else to do with me after that. Why, man? Why did you disown us? What did we do to drive you away? Or was it that you cared more about drugs than you cared about us? What? You're not going to answer me? Gabe! Well, why isn't he answering me? What did we do to drive you away? You didn't do anything. None of you did. I just stopped caring about everything. 
You stopped caring about everything? Including your family? So, where do we stand with you now, John? Let's try to keep our tone constructive. But I asked him a simple question. I know you're angry, but let's try to keep a civil tone, You know what? Okay? This whole thing is stupid. I don't even know why I'm here. Gabe! This isn't helping anything. I'll go talk to him. But you know, he's right about me. What he said back at the hospital? I'm a worthless screw up. No, Dad, I am. I don't even know why the two of you can stick around. John, we may not approve of everything you do, but we love you. And nothing's going to change that. We'll never give up on you. John, my friend, you ready to grab some lunch? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, you been reading the Bible? Uh, yeah. Well, that's great. What are you reading right now? Uh, John chapter 10. I'm very familiar with that chapter. You have any thoughts on it? Well, verse 10 really stood out to me. I've been sitting here thinking about it. That's a great verse. The thief come not, but for the steal, kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah. What does Jesus mean by more abundant life? I believe he means that in him, he wants us to live a thriving life, one full of joy and purpose. Anybody breathing can live a life, but in Jesus, that life can mean so much more. Take it from me, John. I live both, and thank God, I don't have to go back to where I was. John, can't you see it? God has been reaching out to you, left and right. I mean, look at your parents. They loved you unconditionally and have stood by your side with everything they've been through with you. That's because of God in their lives. And look at George how God's been working through him to reach out to you. These are not coincidences. John, what are you waiting for? Why? Why has God been trying to reach out to me? I've done nothing good in my life. He loves you, John. He always has, and always will. What do I do now? Let him in. Let Jesus in as Lord and Savior. Okay, Adam, we will see you in six months. Thanks. Have a good day. You too. I have a delivery for a Kayla Gessler. That's me. Thank you. Sign here. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. So, who are they from? 
Um, it, there's not a name, but it's a poem. <laughs> I don't deserve you, Kayla, this is true, but that doesn't stop me from loving you. If you love the flowers, there's more to bloom. Come out of the office, I'm in the next room. Who's out there, Kayla? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Hi, Kayla. Hey. Join me for dinner tonight? I made reservations at your favorite restaurant. You did, huh? Why should I join you? Kayla, I am so, so sorry that I hurt you. And if I could take it all back, I would. All I'm asking is for you to let me try and earn your trust back. Wow. You seem different. Come to dinner with me and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, I'll join you. What time? Uh, as soon as you're done here. I'll be right here, sitting right there. I'm not going anywhere. By the way, you look good, John. Kayla, you look as beautiful as ever. Read this, please, before you make your choice. before you come to us. Bless you. You know, if you like, we can help you at our center. Uh, we have resources and counselors available. Don't hesitate to call us if there's anything we can do for you. Okay? 
So what was it like to take your first steps as a new believer? It felt great. Mm -hmm. uh, God was opening my eyes to all kinds of things that I hadn't seen. It was tough in many ways. I had hurt a lot of people, especially my family, and I had a lot of relationships to try to repair. But my family could see that I was seriously trying to kick my addiction. Mm. And my parents, they demonstrated what unconditional love was like. <laughs> How about the rest of your family? Uh, Kayla and Gabe were more of a challenge. Mm. With Gabe, it took a long time before we could really open up to each other. And how about Kayla? How did you patch things up with her? She struggled with letting go of the past wounds that I caused her. And my ongoing battle with drugs didn't help matters. Mm. But God. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> but God definitely helped me. Mm. And she could see my growth with my walk with the Lord. I can joyfully report that Kayla has now accepted Christ. <laughs> and our relationship is healthier having him at the center. Amazing. God certainly makes a better captain of our lives and relationships than we can. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, how did you eventually surrender your drug addiction to him? I wish that rehab had cured me the first time, but I ended up going back mm -hmm. twice. And every time I got out, my good old friend Dave was there to offer me freebies. Oh. How did you eventually deal with Dave? Well, I needed help 24-7. Mm -hmm. mm. So after I got out that third time, I wasn't left alone. And Dave never found another opportunity to come around. Mm. So here you are, off of drugs, growing in your relationship with the Lord. How did you eventually sense God's calling to write your book? Well, I started writing just to put my thoughts down on paper. And then after I prayed and reached out to God about it, I felt like he wanted me to write my own story. I had no idea what would come of it, but I trusted his lead and I started writing. So what's come of it? I released it on the fourth year anniversary of my sobriety. And God no doubt has opened up many doors because of that. And Invitations flowed to, to speak to various groups about the book and about my life. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for coming to hear me tonight. And please know that I'm here for you guys. If you want to talk or you need to pray, just let me know. Thank you. Do any of you have any questions? Yes. How long did it take before your cravings completely went away? I don't have a clear-cut answer for that one. Truth is, I can't let my guard down even to this day. Is it a struggle like it used to be? No. But I have to be careful not to place myself in any situations where I can find myself tempted. Yes. Hi, John. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Kayla. They're beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that's the timer. I have to go check on the chicken. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. Your dad and Gabe are watching the baseball game in the family room. I'm on. So is there anything I can help you with? <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, John. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too, old man. Hey, bro. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Good. Good. So, how'd your speaking engagement go with the kids? I think it went good. I got a lot of great questions afterwards, and I trust that God will touch their hearts with some of what I said. I'm sure he will. God does say his word will do what it set out to accomplish. You planted that seed. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So who's winning? Tigers are up one nothing. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You can go 
going. Going to visit Dave today, remember? Oh. Okay. What? I was just thinking, why do you keep visiting that guy? Sounds like he doesn't want anything to do with you. I know, but I don't want to give up on him. Well, you do what you need to do. <laughs> well, I'll be back in a little while. Okay. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> So you find any activities to do? Why do you come here, John? Well, I told you. I, I know what you told me. Why do you still consider me a friend? <sighs> Let me tell you about this person that I'm... He had a hard heart. He didn't care about the people around him. Didn't even care about himself. someone that saw something of value in him. And he reached out to him with unconditional love. That person, he now knows that he's valued. And he now knows that he's forgiven. Okay, what does that mean? Who are you talking about? Talking about me, Dave. God reached out to me and he changed me. And he changed my heart towards you. So, I guess the bottom line is whether what I'm saying to you makes sense or not. I still want to be your friend. I've been playing basketball. What? You asked me about activities. I've been playing basketball. Great. That's great, man. Are you playing by yourself or uh, playing with other guys? I don't shoot hoops by myself like some loser. No, man. I play two on two with a couple guys. That's awesome, man. That's progress, right? It's all right. What an amazing story, John. But it's not over yet. You had a very interesting evening recently. Care to give us some details? Absolutely. I'll take one more question. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, do any of the proceeds of your book go to charity? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. I donate to several charities, including 10% of the profits to Victorious Living Rehab Center. As I shared earlier, that's where I eventually got clean and where I came to know the Lord. Well, folks, we're gonna have to wrap things up here. I wanna thank each and every one of you for allowing me to come and speak to you tonight. Be safe and God bless you.
has to get hard here. Should mind your business. Not your father. mind is you ran to save that woman in distress and came face to face with her attacker honestly uh i didn't know what i was getting myself into i kept thinking and, and praying to god the whole time to help me then uh the attacker got violent with me so my mind just just went into survival mode and i did my best to defend her and myself at that point it was just by the grace of God that we made it. Well, we're glad that you're both safe. Thank you, Robin. I have one final question to ask you, okay? It's about your birth mother. Have you ever thought about tracking her down and meeting her? I have. I thought about it a lot growing up. Life issues and my bad choices distracted me. But I haven't determined how or when I would actually do it. Do you have any leads on how to find her? No, not much. I know very little about her. If you don't mind me asking, what would you say to her if you did find her? I'd let her know that I'm grateful that she gave me life. <laughs> and I hope to get to know her. I hope you get that opportunity, John. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us on Foundations of the Family. Thank you, Charles, for having me. John! I once thought of life as having no meaning. 
or purpose. We live, we die, and nothing in between really matters. But I now know that life is so much more than that. Yes, life is a journey full of ups and downs, joys, heartaches, struggles, victories. But in the midst of all that, there is meaning and purpose. And there's a God out there who wants us to know him and that purpose for which he created us. He wants us to know how greatly valued we really are. So much so that he sent his only son to die for us. So considering our value to God, I've come to this conclusion. A life is worth giving birth to. Worth spending time with. Worth loving unconditionally. Worth taking a risk for. A life is worth living. And I can now say, by God's grace, I'm living it well.